It's Uncle Teddy's learning land. Come on, children, and take his hand. He'll teach you all you need to know. He'll touch you all and loves you so. Eat candy, make adult friends. With Teddy, learning never ends. Uncle Teddy treasures you. He'll watch and see just what you do. No parents allowed. We'll play and get loud. His knowledge is so big that you'll all be wowed. He's big and strong and he'll hug you tight. With Uncle Teddy, everything feels right. Whispering secrets to one another. Trusting him like a big brother. It's Teddy, no it isn't potty. Play, dress up and explore your body. Join him in his learning van. If anyone can teach you, Teddy can. All right. Hey, kids. Welcome to another episode of Uncle Teddy's Learning Land, the place where you can learn and have fun and explore and do even more learning. That's what Uncle Teddy's Learning Land is all about. We're all about expanding your mind because it's really cool to learn stuff, huh? Yeah, man. I'm so excited to do this show. I've always wanted to have my own kids show. When I was a kid, I used to watch Ramblin' Rod all the time. And I would write letters to Ramblin' Rod all the time. And I wanted to be on that show so much, but I never could. And I determined that at some point I was gonna have my own show. And here it is. And you get to be part of it. This is so exciting. Well. Today's show, like all of our shows, has a theme. And today's theme is self-care. What does that mean? Well, self-care is all the different ways we take care of ourselves. We care for others, right? Friends and family. But sometimes we've got to take good care of ourselves. So pay attention to that during the show. Find all the different ways you can learn about how to self-care. Well, it isn't just me, Uncle Teddy, hosting the show as usual. We also have one of your favorite people in the world joining me to help out. Everybody, please welcome Negative Naomi. Yay! 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 Hey, Naomi, uh, how was your day today? It was bad. I sprained the finger I used for scrolling. Oh, oh, that sounds tough. Well, maybe you can practice some self-care and heal that. Um, is it feeling any better yet? No. And that opening theme song is just a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah, I, I feel... <laughs> I feel like we kind of talked about that and there were some edits that didn't get included, but that's okay because you know what? We learn and we're gonna learn from that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we're gonna get this show started and we're gonna follow that theme. Remember kids, what was it? Self-care. Yeah. Le learning. That's right. Self-care and learning. The theme is always learning, but today's theme is self-care. Okay, so we're going to welcome our first guest on the show who's going to tell us ways to care for yourself in the world of beauty. So please welcome our first guest to tonight's show, Lindsay Robinson, who's going to tell us about tips on beauty. Yay! Yay! Hello, everyone. I'm Lindsay Robinson, your quarantine 
beauty queen. I realize that it's very difficult for all of us out there to still keep our glow when the day is tough and when the day is hard and when the day is filled with coronavirus. So I'm gonna help all of us keep our glow and stay in the know. So the most important thing that you all need to understand is that skincare is where beauty begins. Of course, it's important to exfoliate. So because Ulta has been closed for so many, many months, <laughs> it's important that we find other ways to exfoliate. You can use all the coffee grounds that your mother and father have gone through staying up till 3 a.m. watching Tiger King. So please grab those coffee grounds and rub it into your flesh until you feel blood getting to the surface. That's how you know you're beautiful. <laughs> then you're going to want to contour. Now you may ask yourself, how do I contour? It's simple, really. You just slap yourself out of this waking nightmare until you have a bruise on your face that makes you look beautiful. <laughs> then when you're done with that, you're gonna want your eyes to pop because of course you're wearing a mask and it's the only thing anyone will see. So you're going to want your lashes to look glossy and beautiful. The best way to do that because we're out of mascara is to just continue crying about your missing relatives. Let it dry and repeat. Then you'll have the glossiest eyelashes in all of the quarantined house. Also, you may wonder how I got these beautiful red lips. I know it's difficult when you can't get your Ruby Woo fix, but it's easy when you're in a quarantine beauty queen. All you have to do is bite your lip to all the racist comments you see on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that pretty? So I also understand that some of you are concerned about the dreaded quarantine 15. For all those people who don't want to be fleshy sisters like myself, I understand. It's scary. And you want to shed some pounds. Well, it's easy. Just go outside and run up and down your driveway from your fears until you feel better. And then you'll melt away the pounds and hopefully also make your neighbors wonder when you're ever going back to your home so they don't have to look at you in your saggy drawers and your sweaty bra. So for all of you that feel like you're a little less beautiful than you were before we went to quarantine. I just want to tell you one simple thing. I know it's not easy and I know it's hard. And sometimes you may not feel quite as iconic as you did once before. <laughs> but when all else fails, you can do like I do every day. Just don't give a fuck because you're staying inside and no one cares. <laughs> wow that was really interesting wow that was really appropriate for a kid's show well you know that we can probably bleep that last little bit but other than that it was super helpful especially in this day and age of quarantine lots of kids need to know what they can do to still feel good about themselves even though they're trapped inside all the time. All right, so now we're gonna move on to one of my favorite segments where I get to see your letters. It's mailbag time. Here's the mail, it's never stale. I'd never put it up for sale. The USPS will prevail. Mail. Yay. So I had that dream last night again. Oh yeah, tell us more about your dream. I know it's it's we're not we're not on air yet. It's the well it's it's the one I told you about before. It's the one where I use a baby as a human shield. I I was lying before we're actually we're what? on air. What oh uh, okay. <laughs> hey, we're back! Hello everybody. That was a shorter video than I thought. Okay. We're gonna move on to your letters. Like I said, this is the mailbag section. So this is where you get to send in letters to me, Uncle Teddy, and I get to read them on air. Okay, so we have our first one here. This one is from Carl Parrish from Evanston, Illinois. And he is nine and three quarters years old. Oh, uh, it's a, 
is that a Harry Potter reference? <laughs> nine and three quarters because um, because I, I, he was nine and three quarters years old when he went to that magic um, college or whatever it was. I, I haven't read the book. Um, okay, here's Carl's letter. Dear Uncle Teddy, I love your show. It is so weird. <laughs> it makes me feel like when I spin around too much or when I smell the paint cans on uh, dad's stores under my bed. <laughs> I... That's a... <laughs> That's an interesting letter there, Carl. Um, and I appreciate that you love the show so much. Let's, let's just move on. Let's move on to another letter. Okay. <laughs> Here's another letter. This one is from Olivia Parker Bowles, age 11, Salinas, California. Oh, Parker Bowles. That's, uh, is that after Camilla Parker Bowles? I think she's Prince Charles. Never mind. Anyways, um, dear Uncle Teddy. Your show is my favorite. I love all the characters, but my friends and me think someone should die each week to make it more exciting. And we can bet on who will die next. My allowance is on Scrubbles the Math Giraffe. He needs to die next week. Love you. Uh, P.S. <laughs> it's pronounced, pronounced bowels. Olivia Parker bowels. I, okay. think she, um, I, I think she should have bet on you, Uncle Teddy. You know, um, just a little side note. I, I thought you'd like... Um, I'm going to make a note to myself to do a better job of checking these letters before we put them on air. Okay. <laughs> but it's going to get better. It's totally going to get better because we have so many letters to get through. Okay, here's another one. This one is from Adesh Sundar, age seven. Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Oh, shout out to Charm City. Um, dear Uncle Teddy, I purchased a West Bend six ounce stir crazy popcorn maker on June 13th for my fiance's birthday and it never arrived. She left me for my cousin and the next day I got shingles. This whole experience <laughs> was more enjoyable than your terrible show. Sincerely, Adesh. You know what? I appreciate constructive criticism. That's my response to that letter. My man, Oddish. You probably know Oddish. Okay, nope, we're gonna stay positive. We're gonna stay positive. We're gonna, all right, here we go. Last letter in this segment. This one is from, let's see, well, there's no address on the top. Okay, um, oh, this is from Nice, Teddy, age 14, Albany, Oregon. This is my estranged daughter. I haven't seen her in seven years. Dear uncle, father, Teddy, it's taken me years to build up the courage to write this letter. So many things to say, but I have to know why, why you didn't sign that permission slip to the aquarium in the second grade. I had to stay at school and play math games with the vice principal. And now I'm not a marine biologist. I guess this is goodbye forever. Well, that was mailbag. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your yeah. letters. It is so great to hear from everybody. Oh, and also, I almost forgot, every week the last letter that I write is this week's smile contest winner. So uh, niece Teddy or my estranged daughter, you're this week's smile contest winner. So I hope you have a big smile on your face. I wouldn't know what it looks like. All right, <laughs> let's move on. And we've got a very interesting segment coming up. Do you hear a little tinkling in the air? Could it be music? Perhaps our next guest is here to talk to us about music. Please welcome to Uncle Teddy's Learning Land, Todd Fitter. Yay! Hi, boys and girls. My name is Todd, and I'm going to teach you about music today. And what's better to do during a pandemic than to play French horn? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys and girls, I'm going to teach you to play French horn. And I'm going to do... 
Ives 10 step program to play French horn. Can everybody see that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Here's step one. Get a high IQ. Luckily, and boys and girls, if you didn't know what IQ is, go ask your parents. But luckily, I have an exceptionally high IQ. <laughs> so we're good there. <laughs> Step two. Get a French horn. Easy enough. I just happen to have a French horn here. There it is. Nice and still. Can everybody see it? Yeah. 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 Right, you can pick, probably pick one up at Target for 10 bucks. Okay. Step three, buzz your lips. So boys and girls, we're gonna make a really pretty sound like this. <laughs> Beautiful sound. Can you guys try that? Good job. That's beautiful. All right, step four, buzz in mouthpiece. Okay, so boys and girls, this is the mouthpiece. And I'm going to make a beautiful sound in the mouthpiece right now. That sounds great. You can try it, but you don't have a mouthpiece, so you can't. Okay, step five. Put the mouthpiece in the horn and buzz your lips. Try that. All right, that works. Now, step six. Use valves. These buttons here, they're called valves, and we're going to push them down. Let's see if it works. That works. Nice. Step seven, this is an easy step. Practice for 10,000 hours. It's true. He hears it all the time. All right, let's try. Um, Step eight, put it all together, right out. It works pretty easy. Yay! Yay. Step nine. I have been told about this one. I don't really understand it. It says, do the eyebrows. <laughs> okay. So I've been told if you do something with your eyebrows, it makes you play really high. Let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get it. I've been told by my wife that's what I do. I don't believe it. Everybody says it. <laughs> And then, now, boys and girls, it is the quarantine. There is a pandemic going on. What do you do if you have a gig to play? Well, this is my step 10, playing during the pandemic. So hold on for one second, boys and girls, and I will show you how to do it. boys and girls have fun playing the french horn that's all you need to know pretty easy yay hey. that was wonderful thank you so much todd oh man i want to go out and get me one of those ten dollar french horns oh. <laughs> Look, that's I've... not how much they cost it isn't okay well i'm sure it's pretty close to that the important thing is you can explore a world of music that's just right out there and probably at Target. All right, now what's coming up next? I don't know what the next thing is on our show. Oh, I know what it is. Really, you know what it is. What is it? Oh, the next segment on our show is Poetry Parade. Poetry Parade, that's my favorite. All right, let's bring on Poetry Parade. Ha, <laughs> 
poetry parade. Um, uh, just a little n note that whatever that extra text was, we, we probably don't need it. We probably just, we can just take that. I, I don't even own a van. I don't need, okay. Um, all right. Let's talk about the world of poetry. We're going to get fancy and classical for a little minute here. Um, I'm going to read a famous classic poem to expand your minds a little bit and help with the mental self-care. And then after that, we have a really cool segment where one of you, a kid just like you, is gonna come on the show and read one of their original poems. That's right, even kids can write poems. All right, well, here's somebody who was probably a kid at some point. His name, though, when he was an adult, was Robert Frost. And we're going to read his poem, The Road Less Traveled. Two roads diverged in a wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where, um, Oh, there, oh, yeah, uh, two roads. I took the one less traveled by, I know that part. Uh, and that has made all the difference. There, that's the whole poem. That's some fancy classic poetry from a long time ago, probably like 500 years ago, back when roads were just invented. Yeah, so poetry has been around for a long time, maybe even 400 years. That doesn't sound right to me. I'm pretty sure he was the poet laureate this century. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Robert Frost. That name, the name, kind of sounds old. Like Frost. I mean, that's an old sounding name. Yeah. Okay. Let's now that we've had some of the classic poetry from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Let's see something from today. Uh, we've got a kid guest. This is Jason Smith, and he, I think, if my notes are correct, he is 10 years old, and he lives really close by here in Philomath, Oregon. So let's welcome a real kid, a real kid writing poetry. Uh, and Jason Smith's going to write, read his original poem. Please welcome Jason Smith. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm 10. J um... <laughs> You got a, you, you got a beard there. Um, my yeah. mom says I'm advanced for my age. Okay, all right. Um, you know what? I, people ad, uh, develop at different rates. So, um, so welcome to the show, Lil Jason. It's really nice to meet you. Um, I'm excited you. to hear your poem. Great. Um, I miss your stare across my face. Feelings are drawn and can't be erased. Paint me love in colors sharp. Paint me love thick and dark. Being together, I feel like a bad guy playing in secret with your brown eye. Paint me love across my face playing in secret with your brown eye. <laughs> Yay! Um, <laughs> um, I wrote it on the toilet. <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. That um that makes you, that makes you think. That's a thinking sort of poem and it's Straining. good. Yeah, it's good to think about things and and here's a fancy word for kids, interpret. Interpret what the poem means. So interpret. Um, it's about in poop. Interpret. Well, I might not, I, he said it was on the in, in the bathroom, but it might not be about poop. Jason, is, is it about poop? Definitely not. Okay, see? see? Okay, well, this is clearly a 35-year-old man pretending to be a 10-year-old. Well. 35. Okay, um, <laughs> you know. Well, that was just another lawsuit waiting to happen. I'm glad I'm he's just, gone. You know, I'm just gonna believe. I'm really just gonna believe. I'm gonna believe that he was actually 10. I'm just gonna believe that. 
I'm going to tell myself that because it's the world makes a lot more sense if that man was 10. And that's all I have to say about that. Keep lying to yourself, Teddy. This show is, no, you know what? There's always an opportunity to, to turn things around. When the air, paper airplane you made is going towards the, the fire pit in your backyard, there's always a chance that a gust of air is gonna lift it up and, and not send it into the fire. And maybe it lands in your neighbor's backyard. Maybe, I don't know, but it doesn't land in the fire. And we're not gonna land in the fire right now because we're gonna move on to our next segment. We've got a great segment. This might be your favorite part of the whole show. It might be Crazy Wild John's part of the show. Is it your favorite part of the show? I, I don't have a voice for him yet, but I'm gonna work on that. Okay, this next part of the show involves balloon animals. Yeah! Wow! So, cool. so please welcome to the show Mike McGowan and his balloon animals. Yay! 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 Hey, hey, hey guys, how's it going? I want to introduce my balloon animal friends because in, in the time of COVID, self-care means having friends, right guys? Yeah. Hey, my friend. So this is my friend Donovan. You may think that he's a wiener dog, but he's not. That's a mistake. He's a giraffe, but had a very rare illness where they had to remove over seventy-five percent of his neck. So he can't see as tall, but that doesn't make him any different or any less fun to hang out with. He loves flowers. Look, he has his flower right here. This is his favorite flower. It's the only flower left because of global warming. There's not a lot of flowers Aww. left anymore. They're all gone. Uh, and this is this is Jimmy. Jimmy is a monkey. You see him? He's smiling. He's the coolest monkey ever. Um, he. He likes to hang out. He used to have more monkey friends, but I keep my balloon animal friends in the back of my truck while I'm at work. And sometimes they pop because it's too hot in there for the balloon animals, but it's okay. He survived. He's a survivor. Um, like he has AIDS and he still survived because he's the monkey that people talk about that, that got the AIDS, which is weird because it is safe sex. He did used to be a condom in another life. But, you know, it happens. <laughs> Life happens. <laughs> it happens and that's okay. And no judgment. And then this is my last little friend. I'd like you guys to say hi to Shoni. Can you say hi, Shoni? Hi, Ken. Hi, hi Shoni. Hi, Shoni. Hi, hi, Shoni. I, I love you guys. I like having a friend. So Shoni is my friend. He came to me early in life because sometimes the thoughts would get into my head and they'd be too much. So Shoni came around and now Shoni whispers into my ear. He tells me the things that your parents don't want you to know. Like Bill Gates is the reason why you can't leave your house right now. <laughs> but it's okay because then there's gonna be people, they're arresting people right now. And then once they arrest the people, oh, I'll be over. And then we'll get to run around as long as you get the microchip into your palm. And when you get the microchip into your palm, you get to go and buy candy at the store without money. And that'll be <laughs> fun, right? That'll be okay. But he's my favorite. I've lived so long with him. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh Well, that one made me happier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I liked it when the balloon popped. Uh, um. Uh, can we cut? Can we cut to commercial or something like that? That was that got really dark. 
Yeah, that got dark. Let's uh, okay. let's lighten it up with the commercial. Okay. All right. Hi, kids. <laughs> Uncle Teddy's Learning Land is brought to you by Two Town Cider House. One, one can. Two, that's a nice pair. Four, four cans. Five, those are some nice cans. Six, six cans. Seven, seven cans. Cans is another word for breasts. Nine! Nine cans! Ten! Ten cans! Sneak out is not for children. Sneak out contains 5% alcohol and is made from real food, juice, and wine. Flavors are seasonal and may not be available in your area. Uncle Teddy's Learning Land is contractually obligated to promote Sneak Out since Two Town Cider House is a sponsor of the show. Uncle Teddy and his friends can enjoy Sneak Out. You should wait until you're older. You should definitely tell your parents about Sneak Out. Ask your doctor before ordering a book with the frequency. Please drink sponsor. I mean, it's like I've always said. It's really incredible what you can stuff these days. Yeah, we're, we're not on the air. Tell me more about your enema. Well, it was... Oh, dang it! We... <sighs> Uh, just, uh, <laughs> just like, um, hello, kids, we're back. Uh, that was some really interesting stuff with balloon animals. You know, you can learn how to do that stuff yourself. Just take balloons and twist them and they stay into shapes. It's really interesting. Um, okay, so now we do have to get back to our theme for the day. Do you remember what that was? What was the theme for the day? Self-care. Mm. Self-care. Learning. Self-care and learning. Le learning is, see, learning, it's in the title, so it's like that's always the thing. But, um, but today it's self-care, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to take care of ourselves right now in a little segment that involves um, anatomy. Now that's a big fancy word, but that just means bodies. So we're going to learn some about our body's health. Please welcome for a health minute update, Kegel the Clown. Woo! And welcome to Girls Area with me, Kegel the Clown. Now, we all know this portion of our fun time, Happy Wonderama, is for girls only. So all you boys out there, y'all gonna have to step away. Go play with your friends until all hours of the night. Leave. Okay. Just like Ted did. Okie dokie, girls. Our first installment of Girls Area is entitled, Is There Supposed to Be Hair There? Now, as y'all continue to grow like the precious flowers you are, your body will begin to go through some interesting changes. Changes. Change. Going through the change, they call it. It's a change, all right, as you roll in the fires of hell with hot flesh as you watch your ass clatter to the ground and your husband mad dash for the door for a younger model without chin hair. But not you girls. You, you all get 
great boobs and never have to worry about a thing back to you, Uncle Ted. Um, <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's really interesting. Thank you, Kegel the Clown. But um, uh, girls, like girls, like girls who watch the show, like eight to 12 year olds. Oh. What's, uh, are you sure you have stuff to tell just them? Oh, they tell you everything you want to know when you're 10 and 12 about your boobs and your period. It's going to be so fun and dating. But no, you know what? They don't tell you. They don't tell you when you're 50 that your fucking life's over. That's why I'm out of okay, here. Okay, open back. All right. Uh, thank you. That's, uh, that's some interesting uh, learning about, about the future of, of women. Do you think she meant like your fucking life, like your sex life, or like your life life? Um, I think uh, I think we need to model the behavior of not saying words like that. Like we need to just like be Word, words like what? Like the the f dash ing word. Fingered. <laughs> All right, um, we're gonna, you know, oh, here, you know what? It's a great time for this segment, oh, for all of our live viewers right now who are watching um, the show live on public access uh, at 1.45 a.m. because that's the only slot they said was available for a, a kid's show, like a kid's show, like a, like a kid's show, eight to 12, like a, kids show which is what this really is um yeah um anyways um if you're able to call in kids who are up maybe sick not sleeping an earache or whatever um it's it's a chance for you to call in so let's do the call in segment you can talk to me uncle teddy call me tweet me if you want to reach me Okay, there it is. Um, the uh, the the crew at um, at the um, at, at the majestic uh, or the the Corvallis Access Media assure me that the number is projected on the screen right now. Like they said for certain, the number is on the screen. So call that number, and if you're a kid, call in. Who's our first caller? Hello. Hey, hello. Oh, it's a video call. Cool. So, hi. Tell us uh, who you are and how old you are. Yes. Hi. Oh, can you see me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we can We can actually see you. It's not just oh. a, it's a video call. We can see you and hear you. I'm on the air? Yep. Yep. You're on Uncle Tenny's Learning Land, and this is your chance to ask me anything about the world of learning. Sweet. Uh, wonderful. Uh, I thought I was going to get, like, screened out and, like, no, I wasn't going to be able to get on. That's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, 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 awesome. you're here. yeah, you're here. Yeah, you can ask anything. Oh anything my god, that a okay. Kid would want to know, like a kid, like a kid, kid. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Okay, cool. What's your question? Okay, uh, can you get that horny guy back on? The oh, with the French horn. Oh, wasn't he great? That was fascinating. Yeah, can you just can you just look, get him back on the air? Um, I, he might come on a future show. I think he would like to come back and tell us more. Yeah, he could you, maybe could you the tell next, him I say hi. You know what? I will. That's great. He'll want to know that fans are interested in what he told us about music. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm interested in. Music? Great. What kind of music do you like? What's like the what's that the shark song or? I'm interested in his horn, specifically. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's really interesting. A real French horn lover who just loves the French horn. I want to buzz on it. <laughs> that's how you make sound. That's how you make it go, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right. All right. Tell him I say hi. Okay, Thank you. Great. 
All right, great. I'm sure we got her contact information <laughs> uh, that Corvallis Access Media has it. Um, in particular, Chad Howard told me specifically he's recording all the names and phone numbers of children who call his number. All right, who's got our next guest here? Somebody else is going to uh, call in. Um, <clears throat> hey. Hello. Um, hi. hi, Jason. Hi. I'm, I'm 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, buddy. Well, you look familiar, uh, Slugger. Um, it's Jason from Philomath. Yeah, I've got a question. So the other day I was at uh, the meet the playground, and I drank too much apple juice, um, and I got in trouble and was taken to the timeout. Uh, and my dad, he bailed me out of timeout and said, don't worry, son, you know, everyone makes mistakes. Um, you know, even all your heroes have made mistakes. Uh, so I just wanted to know, Uncle Teddy, uh, what's the worst thing you've done in public? <laughs> uh, um, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. That is a really interesting question. That's a question that makes me think and thinking is using our brains and brains need to be activated with learning so oh, don't yeah. shirk don't shirk the 35 year old man's question teddy you want to uh, hear the answer he's he's 10 he is thank you teddy 10 yes you're 10 um and your question was that was about apple juice so i'm going to respond to that one um uh the you know what i have a similar one one time when I was little, I drank too much uh, of that certain caffeinated root beer, the one that they don't tell you has caffeine in it, and I just love root beer, and I drank too much of it, and I got a little bit too spicy, as it were, <laughs> and, uh, and I ran across the freeway multiple times because I was really into Frogger, um, and I, <laughs> I got on a few logs and crocodiles of a I got hit by a car. I got hit by a couple cars. I got hit by one and then spun into the other. Um, wow. And it was a pinwheel thing. Um, and the world uh, is, a, it's, it looks different from that perspective, from that vantage point. I like to play Call of Duty. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, that's, um, I feel like the call-in segment might need some workshopping, might need some brainstorming. Whatever. Um, thank you, Jason. Um, 10 years old from Philomath. He's 10 years old. He's 10 years old. Uh huh. Um, okay, you know what? It's time for another guest. We need, I, I, I said the word spicy. Here's somebody who knows a thing or two about spiciness. It is your favorite cook on TV. It's my favorite cook on TV. And one thing about self-care is you got to feed yourself well, huh? That's the energy, the fuel that powers the body. So let's listen to some interesting tips from famous cook, Dolla Peen. Cleaning my teeth. Um, <laughs> you know, as we talked about earlier, um, quarantine has been rough and a lot of us have run out of stuff in our house. And I want you to still feel like pre quarantine where you were all perfect. So I want to show you um, how you can use things that you might have in your house, specifically my favorite things, booter and all and how you can use them to fill in the gaps of the thing that you used to use. Um, so number one, <laughs> your teeth are feeling a little slimy. You can just like, you can just boot her along up, y'all. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you know, and what's nice about that is a lot of your toothbrushes are still gonna have a bit of a minty taste. So you're still gonna get that same frothy feeling, y'all. <laughs> and that's really, really nice. Um, another thing that you can do is if you have something 
frozen like in your freezer uh like this fish stick that i have you can just like dip that in some butter and then you can use that to just rehydrate them lips mm. Mm. and then if you are a little hungry you can just mm, just eat that lip hydrator um and i think that's nice because it gets that booter like deep into your your lips and all those crevices and then they're just nice and moisturized with all that cow milk y'all um if you want to use some oil which i always want to do you can just put some of that in your hand and you just rub your hands together and then you just oil up that fat <laughs> It is dry out there. <laughs> it was 102 degrees in our house today. You know, I just need a little more. And this will probably help you like tan up a little bit because it is going to, you know, get a little warm in that sun. Oh, I can already feel it working. And that's what I really like to do. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you want to treat yourself. You want to have those good experiences that you used to have. But if you can't go to the store, and so you're out of things to make yourself fancy, fancy drinks, like dear old Dala here, um, you're trying to find creative ways to get that same idea back into your life. And so I'm going to teach you how to make a, a little cocktail um without any of the 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 fun or the the tipsy part you know so you need a good old cocktail shaker okay and then i'm just going to use a can of regular regular carbonated coffee y'all it's just those draft coffees just dump a little bit of that in there and then um i'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla okay you're just gonna a little bit of vanilla and it's gonna sizzle and that might sound scary y'all and it maybe should be a little scary when you smell it and you realize that you thought that was vanilla but maybe it's peppermint and this is coming as a big old surprise to you because those have been in your cupboard for a long time and that's gonna be a-okay y'all um, all right and then you're gonna get a little bit of cinnamon all right and you're just gonna Sprinkle that in there because this is supposed to be vanilla, okay? <laughs> and a little bit of nutmeg. <laughs> All right. And then because we're talking about cocktails, I recommend using a glass like this. Now in this glass is a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, if I tilt it, I don't wanna spill it. There's an egg white in there, y'all. Oh, I spilled a little bit. Uh, there's an uh -huh. egg white in there comes out of this glass it really brings out the cock part of the tail you know it's kind of gooey <laughs> and sticky and it really just <laughs> everything that you want in a cocktail you know it, it leaves a nice little trail and you're just like oh, oh, oh. all right so you just like jump that right in okay and then you're gonna want to give that what i call a dry shake now this is different than what you might do with normal cock stuff where you want to use a little bit of lubricant, but you're just going to shake this on up till it gets all frothy. And then, oh yeah. Then you're going to use the secret weapon. Now this is something that I have been promoting for years. It's sustainable for the earth. And it's something I make, it's called a booter sickle. Now what I've done is I've taken <laughs> a, a barbecue stick and a good old stick of booter and I put it in the freezer, all right? So it is, it's ice cold, y'all. And then I'm just going to put that in there and I'm going to give it a little stir to cool it down. Oh, yeah. And it comes out all brown and nice. Because this is coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I put it in an ice glass. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, obviously, you got, mmm. Mm, that booter sickle. Mm. <laughs> and then you just try that little frothiness. Oh, no. 
Once again, if that was vanilla, that would be very good. Um, <laughs> there's a bit of a bite to it that sometimes you get because this is all just for fun. Um, and if it's not to your liking, you just, mmm. You just eat that booter. Y'all, it's good to cover your teeth when you put the booter in your mouth because you don't want to see teeth marks. If you want to think of this as like practice, you can. So that way when you get out of quarantine, you can have a better time with your friends. Um, oh, but see, it got a little bit on the side and you just kind of want to, uh, mm, there you go, y'all. Um, anyway, those are kind of my quarantine tr tricks. Actually, one more thing. If you want to really add to this, you just do a little bit of an oil float on the top. <laughs> And that's really just going to help with your appetite, y'all. It's going to take you to that part of the diet that we call the keno. And that's what all of the skinny kids are doing these days, because you're just doing what I like to call a booter bomb, which is where there's just a lot of booter that goes into your body, and then you explode later. <laughs> Does that sound good, Uncle Teddy? No, no. This, um, <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, Let's all let's just all do a round of applause for Dollapine. <laughs> wow, that was um, so. Uh, we do want some moderation with oil and butter. They can't always eat those things, <laughs> so I thought that was going to be a little healthier, just a little. Um, but that, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I thought because, it was cool, like very Bay Area, very chic. Oh, oh, okay, all right. Um, I thought it was like, I guess I was getting a little, you know, kind of down on the show, thinking like things were, you know, kind of going a direction. I, I don't know. It was not. Oh, no, I, no. It, they, they it, have that. Bulletproof coffee is a thing. Very hip. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I had a little culture in there with the, 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 uh, the cooking science and stuff like that. Oh, oh, speaking of, I said cooking science. You know what it's, it's time for? It's time for some science. It's science time. Yay. Science is fun. It's really divine. Study science. It is not a waste of time. With degrees in science, you can social climb. I have a BA, all I can do is rhyme. Yeah! Science! Oh, God. Uh, that wasn't at all offensive to people who study liberal arts. What? I thought Don't it was... Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> okay, well, that was... That's the intro to science time. It's one of my favorite segments because I'm kind of like a science nerd. I like really nerding out about science stuff. So here's an experiment you can do at home. And if there's any kids watching and they want to chime in and see how it works for them, try along with me. These are things you have readily at hand. They're right nearby. I'm sure they're within like reaching distance right now of where you are. And this is an science experiment that you can do right away. So first, just take uh, a glass with exactly five eighths of a tablespoon of baking soda. Now this is like right near you, wherever you are. It's like, there's probably a box, like a little box and there's, and you just get five eighths of a tablespoon. Put that in the cup. Next, it is simply one half cup of common white distilled vinegar. Now it doesn't matter the quality or anything like that. You might know this, baking soda and vinegar, it makes a volcano, am I right? But I am doing an experiment in measurement and it's going to go all fizzy, all volcano-like, right up to the top, okay? Because I've measured exactly. If you wrote those measurements down, you can do this at home, okay? If you've got your cups ready, you've measured three times, okay? It's gonna fizz right up to the top. Ooh. Sometimes it, okay, all right. You know what, I think, I think I didn't double check my <laughs> ingredients, but a good scientist always brings a backup, right? And just in case 
It doesn't work the first time. You got to try again. And that's how you learn. That's what learning's all about, making mistakes and then learning from them. Okay, same thing. I measured it. We're going to do this again. Oh, whoops, I got to get some water. Uh, that's probably enough. I don't know. <laughs> doesn't have to be exact. Um, there it goes. It's going to fizz. Oh. Well, the, uh, okay. You, you know what? Yours probably fizzed. And that is the, uh, the experiment about measurement. Yay. So did anyone at home do that with those exact me measurements? Any kids? No. 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 I, I just <laughs> wanted to say I did it and mine went great. Oh, you did? That C, C kids. Naomi got it to work. So it must have just been something where I needed to double check my work. Um, or... Also, I'm better at science than you. Well, you know, you're more kind of professionally about science and I'm more of a casual or like a hobbyist, you know, but sometimes people who have a really intense hobby are actually better than the people who do it professionally. I mean, you know, we don't have the PhDs and stuff, but it's, it's all about enthusiasm with science. Right. It is. It is. I think Einstein said that. It's all about enthusiasm. It's 100% enthusiasm is what he said science or whatever, just genius was. Okay. Um, what's next? Oh, you know what? We're going to try again with another little health tip. Let's bring back to the show Kegel the Clown, this time to talk about... Uh, to talk about substance abuse. Yes. Oh, now you miss Dollapine. I love that butter thing. Is it possible to use that on a margarine? Oh, shit. Hi, girls. And welcome back with Kegel the Clown. It's so good to see you come back for our second segment this morning. Not everything comes back. People, your libido. Ugh. Our next installment is called Smoky Smoke and the McDruggy Booze Train. Now, as you continue to grow like the mighty redwood saplings you are, There'll be times when your friends will want you to try things. Things like alcohol, cigarettes, or even drugs or hormones. No, no, you can't get a Xanax prescription, but go ahead, Mr. Doctor Man. Pump me full of cancer-causing hormones so I'm not so hard to live with. And maybe I'll stop craving zoo food so bad that I no longer feel the need to wrap my lips around the fridge and just tilt it every night. But not you, girls. No, y'all, you're going to be fine. Y'all drink responsibly at 21 or 18 if you go to Canada. You poo-poo smoking is not being insta-worthy. And you'll dabble in CBD oil for your occasional gelato headache. Back to you, Uncle Ted. Um, hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks once again, Kegel the Clown. This is not what we discussed before the show. Not, not really at all. Um, <laughs> did we discuss are you saying i'm losing my memory is that what you're saying no no that's um no we'll we'll just talk we'll have a we'll do a little post-mortem you know after the show we'll talk we'll talk about stuff um, yeah oh, shit. I, that was kegel the clown everybody another important health tip it's important to only put good nutritious things in your body hey teddy what's up naomi how's it going I, I wanted, I was wondering maybe you could tell the boys and girls what Kegel means. That's, um, you know what, that's an ancient, that's an old um, German word, which the German language was actually, it's, a, it's the oldest language. Um, and it goes old back. Like Robert Frost? Oh, even older. Yeah, no, it goes back, like, I think the first Bible, like the Bible, original copy written in German, I think. 
I think. And Kegel is probably like a word in the Bible. I don't know. You know, this has me thinking. We've done some science. We've learned some health. We might need to now branch out, talk about things, you know, not necessarily inside our body, but between our bodies and other bodies, like relationships. How do we interact with other people? So we're going to bring in my friend and soon to be yours, Gabby. She's going to come in here and she's going to talk to us about relationships. Hi, boys and girls. So glad you can tune in. I'm Gabby Jesus, and I'm going to teach you about relationship advice during quarantine. Yay. I don't know if you, yay. I don't know if you know this, but did you know that everything is full of cum? That's right. Everything. <laughs> Girls are full of cum. Trees are full of cum. Even the Dalai Lama is full of cum. Whoa. Especially Uncle Teddy. So, did you know that coming would actually help most of the world's problems and health issues? Like anger management, uh, the weather, um, politics, everything. So, I'm going to let you guys know three, three handy ways to come during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Woo. All right, number one, hiking. Did you know it's not, it's not just everyone's pretend favorite sport? Look, they don't call it trailhead for nothing, okay? Okay, <laughs> this is what you do. You meet up at your favorite trail and then finally put it to good use. That's right. And women get a bonus. Women, did you know that you can hug a tree while doing doggy style? That's right. Tree what? hugger. <laughs> More like tree boner. <laughs> Number two, you know that long distance failed relationship, ghost of relationships past? I do. Well, time to resurrect that boner. What not a better time to have intimacy while talking on the phone, video call, you can rub one out, and then you don't have to cook breakfast for three in the morning. <laughs> and let, let's not forget this, boys and girls. Self-care. We said it so many times on this program, but really what self-care means Masturbation. What? Masturbation is such a healthy way to grow. Yeah. Yeah. So we no longer just need food and water. We need masturbation. You don't know how? Not very good at it? Well, buckle yourself in and tie yourself up. Maybe even spank yourself or whatever you're into. <laughs> now you have all the time in the world during the pandemic for self-care, a.k.a. masturbation. Ooh. And now, boys and girls, I just want to let you know that I can take a couple questions from the audience. You can ask me anything. This is a safe place. Anybody? Question. Um, do you do private shows for like one-on-one -on -one coaching with the self-care? Uh, excuse me, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 10. He's 35. <laughs> uh, next question. Hi. Um, uh, do you think um, that the dollopines butter freezing method could be shaped into different kinds of shape does it have to be a like a cube shape that's a very good question whatever your name is 
I can definitely let you know that food and byproducts are a healthy alternative to dildos. Do you know how to say dildo? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. All right. We have one more question before we do our fun facts. I have a question. Oh, hi. Yes. Hey. I, I hate the messy cleanup after I'm done doing it with my partner. Do you have any tips on how to cut down on the mess? Absolutely. That is a very great question. Not only are tarps used to cover your car, but now you can just lay them out on your bed. Also, if you're feeling kind of, you know, <laughs> randy, you can go ahead and have your boyfriend cut a hole through it. Oh, wow. That's crafty and smart. Uh, hey, yes. ha -ha. hey, hello, hey. <laughs> um, I, um, I just stepped away to uh, get a little snack and tarps. We we're talking about tarps and sploosh. What? This was... <laughs> yes. It's great. Well, actually, now that you're here, we have one final fun fact for you. Uh, what is it? Did you know that sperm kills 95% of plaque? That's right, boys and girls. You no longer have to swallow or spit. Just swish. I knew it. Wow. This says... Has been Gabby Jesus, everybody. Thank you, Gabby. Yes. Um, that was. Uh, I'm just. Um, there was. There was something educational there. There was something. There was learning. We learned a new word, Uncle Teddy. You did. Was it yeah. like a a word that kids could use? Like kids, kids uh -oh. could use. Um. Maybe if we split it into pieces, um, like the first word is mast. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like a ship, like sail, like pirates. Mm -hmm. Then herb, which is kind of close to the unit ergs. And okay. um, science. And Asian, it's a, a common, common suffix <laughs> helping kids learn about the SATs. All right. Good, yeah. yeah. So they learn, it's like three words in one. And I think we should chant them together in that order. Okay, all right. So like, do the first part like a pirate? Can I do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. All right. Mast. Mast. Er. Er. Asian. <sighs> it just, uh, it doesn't feel right because you need to say it with no, more enthusiasm. I know, but it, it in my mind it came together. It came together. In in my <laughs> mind, I know it. I know that. I know the word now. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I think I think we'll we'll talk about learning in a in a bit because, um, you know what, we're gonna pick. We're, we got some. We gotta have some pizzazz. We're going to pick some pizzazz up into the show. We're going to pull this paper airplane out of the fire pit. We're not going into the fire pit. No. Okay. Because right now we're going to do some fun with magic. It's like, um, yeah, we're I was not Catholic for like two weeks, but then I was just like, uh, you know, like, uh, it's, ca you know, it's like, I appreciate the Beatles, but, you know, they're great. They contributed to music, but I'm not really inspired by the Beatles. It's more like, I want something that's like fresh and cutting edge. Yeah. Tell me more about your deep inner thoughts. We're not on the air. I know. It's just. 
well, then I think maybe I'll just keep my Sundays open and I'll develop a passion for something else, like wakeboarding. I don't know. What would you wear while you wakeboarded? Well, oh, I saw something on Etsy. I'm going to... Are we on? Are we on? We're on the air. I, was, I, was, yeah. I did it again. <laughs> oh, pranks. Oh, pranks. This, just what this show needs right now is pranks. To liven it up, to, to lift it up, to freshen it up. We're going to freshen up the show right now. And what's more fresh than magic? Magic has been around for as long as Robert Frost, if you know what I mean. Magic tricks have been done by uh, peasants, by the clergy, by politicians, by animals sometimes. Sometimes animals do magic. So it's something that everybody does throughout the, uh, the human and the animal kingdom. And I'm gonna teach you guys a really quick magic trick, okay? This is something you can do at home with a common everyday quarter. Quarter, it's a, it's a big coin. Don't use a smaller one because you know, this one, it helps. Anyways, take the quarter and you're gonna like, I'm gonna do the disappearing quarter act. Hold it here, do a little presentation, make sure everybody sees where it is. And then you go, oh, I'm going to grab it. All right. And you go like this and you're like, oh, but where is it? Is it in my hand? Right. And then you, you actually, oh, I actually grabbed it. Um, wait, is it? Arr, I practiced this for the, of the show. Oh my God, this is, I don't need this. I don't need this right now. I don't need, you know what? I'm gonna just throw caution to the wind with this show. We're taking this paper airplane straight into the fire pit. We wanna see what's inside. So let's bring back another health minute from our friend, Kegel the Clown. Kegel, you're tight. today is nutrition and you know your nutrition nutrition can be your friend whatever all day now you know you know you know who's not your friend you know who's not your friend it's your uterus yeah that's right freaking thing tricks you into thinking oh i'm all grown with my bloody fecund self and now we'll be perfect boobs and boys and bachelorette parties and babies but but they'll tell you they'll tell you when that that shit when that when that shit dries up and so does your marriage your marriage and you're left a sweating balding childless emotional divorcee so girls stay hydrated and eat your fucking greens that was that was Kegel the clown? I have a silver lining. You your do? mad your magic was better than that. <laughs> that that clearly isn't designed to pick me up, but it uh, it does it it does. It's it's given me enough hope that we're gonna finish this show strong. And you know why? You know why? Because I was a little bit concerned about this next guest because I thought the subject might be too heavy, too adult for kids. It is. Uh, but, it's, but it's important because this segment, kids, now I'm talking to you again, kids, this next segment, um, it's about how to deal with dying relatives, okay? This is a serious subject. So if you need to grab your favorite softy or, or your blanket, or even have a parent nearby, 
bring your parents nearby and tell them this is what I've been watching and this is what I want to watch with you. This segment is, it's really important. It's a part of life and it's a part of self-care. So please welcome Jason Davis talking to us about how to care for dying relatives. Hi. Hi, boys and girls. It's your, you know what? It's because I'm black that this is so dark like this. Everything's just got to be against me all the time. All right. This is the last one, maybe we can. All right. So, uh, boys and girls, this is, uh, this is a tough subject, but this is self care. I was supposed to turn a light on, it didn't work. Things don't work a lot of the time in life. Sometimes, you know, people you love are going to die and you're going to be there for them. You got to love them through it. And like Gabby said, that means you got to masturbate. You know, you got to masturbate a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do drugs. <laughs> you got to, you know, not like hard drugs. You don't want to do heroin. Okay. But if your friend has some speed or something just to get you through the day, the night. You got to be there for Grandpa Joe. You know, he's got that heroin. Not heroin. You've got the hair. I'm sorry. It's been a rough time, kids. So let's talk about self-care and dying relatives. Well, when my grandfather had uh, Alzheimer's, I went and I stayed with him. I took care of him, and it was a great experience for me, you know, because I got to speak with my grandfather. He told me about the men he would beat when he was drunk. That's what the uh, the Alzheimer's brings back. Good memories. So, you know, that enlightened <laughs> me. Drink. Drink heavily. Drink until you can't remember your name, and strike the first person that tries to tell you your name. Because they're apparently a demon trying to get into your asshole. <laughs> you get wisdom, wisdom from the elderly, from these people in your life that were always there. But when they're on their last leg, that's when the gold nuggets start dropping right out of that sphincter of knowledge. You know the one. <laughs> uh, yes, but, uh, you know, then one day it was time for him to go. And I let him. But also, he knew, and I knew, that I needed to be able to take care of myself. So was there a fire? There may have been. Did I blame it on an old man? I might have. Did I receive that insurance payment? Only the law knows. <laughs> but in, in all accounts... <laughs> I'm able to live my best life. I take care of myself. I read. I read a lot. This is uh, a good book. It's called The Five Families. When society breaks down because of the knowledge I received from that book, I'll understand how to, how to run a group of marauders, as I will need to know how to do very soon. So I have time for that. You know? I have time for, for cinema. You know? Cinema, it's good. VHS, because DVDs <laughs> are how the government gets into your home. They, each DVD has nanochips in it, and they get into <laughs> your, your wires and your walls and in your cats. They get into things, yes. So protect yourself, children. Every night before you go to bed, say a prayer to St. Ignatius. I don't know what saint he is, but he's a saint, so pray to him that all this ends in your favor. Uh, also, do hallucinogens. They're good for you. They are from the earth, the ones that I've done, at least. Not all of them. Most of them. But whatever you can do that raises your well-being and your upper inner self out you know, just do it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, in a few months, we're probably going to be fighting <laughs> for food in the streets like dogs. Ah, uh, yes. And then, then I'll make my grandfather proud. Yeah. But yeah, you know, you're the future. So you, you're the ones that need to know all this. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, 
I'm still here. I'm just, I'm taking, I'm taking adult medicine. Oh God. Oh God. What, what have we done? <laughs> Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> so it's all it's okay, kids. Oh, it's Uncle Teddy. He's back. <laughs> okay, it's Uncle Teddy. I saw you with those kids down by don't, the river in your van. Don't leave, Jason. It's all good. Um, I uh, I, I thought maybe you could teach the kids a little about um, anime. I mean, there's really good anime out there. You know, lots of tentacle anime. Young. <laughs> <laughs> women and you know nothing really matters at this point so those suction cups they probably feel good you know what i'm talking about teddy yeah yeah, is this, yeah you know this is you still like a pirate kind of shit. i mean it can be pirates <laughs> dude it can be try whatever you want yeah pirates they Until the internet goes away we can have whatever carnal desire we can imagine just type it into your search engine and it's there but soon, it's just going to be a raccoon that you find on the side of the road that was out in the sun all day. So, that's got to do, right? <laughs> um, Pirates is a pornography you can watch. Pirates? <laughs> yes, the, the highest like, budget pornography film. Like, like Johnny Depp? Like, mm -mm. like... like I don't know, Errol Flynn, like swashbuckling. No, more, more like Johnny Depp than that one. <laughs> I don't know. This is this has been an interesting show. This the has kids, been a journey. The a kids show. learned a lot today. You know, I think that's the truest statement. That's the that's and this is the most true time we have said that after a show, because frankly, we say. The kids learned a lot with every show, which they do. But this one in particular, I think, is the truest statement that kids learned a lot. And the final thought might be that sometimes you can learn too much. Like sometimes, I know it's learning land where learning is great and that's the currency of learning, learning land and all their Broadway plays are about learning in learning land. But even learning land needs to have some borders and rules and laws and, and fences and you know, strict control of people's behavior sometimes because sometimes you can learn too much. I think that's the lesson of today's show. Um, I, th it, I think we're missing, we're missing some of the lessons. Maybe there's like a little video we could watch to remember what we learned. That's great. Yes. Let's, in, let's put everything together in a video about what we learned, all right? Let's keep that airplane out of the fire pit. What did we learn? 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 Today. That was great. I like that a lot. Um yeah, it was, I, uh, I don't know what else to say. Any, any other takeaways? Do we have any, um, any kids who are still kids, like kids, like kids um, watching the show with any thoughts? What did you learn today? <laughs> yeah, uh, I learned that if I would have watched you guys when I was really, really, really little, it would have fucked me up more. Like, like five or five years ago when you're six years ago when you were little. Yeah, before my balls had dropped. Wait, your balls have dropped. Oh, they've dropped. <laughs> Te teach us something. How old are you? I'm ten. My balls I've... dropped earlier this year. I learned something. Oh, okay. Did you learn something that perhaps is not about balls? Yeah. Oh, great. What is it? I learned how to make a coin disappear in a place I can't think of her, I can show you. Her you brown can, eye. You can tell us. You, did you do the ear one or mm -mm. up the nose Lower. one? That's pretty risky. I didn't want you to try that. Lower. 
the ooh the belly button one that's like exotic <laughs> lower um yeah. like be like behind your knee like you like your knee is bent and it's behind your knee higher please no please can it be behind your knee <laughs> i think it's the bell of your french horn <laughs> If you know what I mean. I think at this point, Naomi, we do. And that has been Uncle Teddy's Learning Land. Thank you all so much for coming. We have enjoyed putting this show together for you and we think you all learned a great deal. And perhaps the most important thing you learn is that this show was made by the Majestic Theater. Thank you, Majestic Theater, for putting this on and having um, all the technical support. Paul, in particular, Jimbo, uh, just all the people. Um, uh, so yeah, we got to uh, thank the Majestic Theater. I'm Michael Winder, the uh, the uh, alter ego of Uncle Teddy. Like that was a mystery until the very end. Um, but I'd also like to give the biggest shout out of all right now to Negative Naomi, who put together almost the entire thing. Woo! Yay! Woo! Hey. And it's if you are true. watching, yes, it is true. It is. I'm speaking on your behalf. I know that's inappropriate, but I'm going to say it's true. Mansplain it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, mansplain it to her. And let me spread out here. Kids, we have one more lesson. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Yes, thank Naomi was great, and uh, John also, AV John is great. Um, I'm going to point out there is a tip jar, I think, somewhere on the Facebook. I don't know where it is, but if you want to drop some money in there for some of our performers, um, this is, you know, this is livelihood for, for some people. It's certainly a, a, a serious passion uh, and we got to support artists. You got to support artists, especially now, perhaps more than ever. I don't know. I'm just going to say that. Um, but I'd like to give a shout out to all of our performers. I'm going to go through the list here because there's been so many. I'm going to start with the wonderful Lindsay Robinson. <laughs> The incomparable Woo. French horn playing Todd Fitter. Yes. Kiss that horn. Barney. Uh, the balloon animals from Mike McGowan. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Rub on them. Uh, and we had uh, three appearances from Kegel the Clown, played by Dory Board. She scared me. Uh, and the wonderful, and you can find more Dollapine or so videos, I think, on Facebook or elsewhere. Please, a round of applause for Dakota Cloud. Yeah! Booter! Booter oil. Booter oil. Booter. Yes. And the show took an interesting turn with the incredible segment by Gabe, Gabby Jesus. And yeah! Woo! Uh, that one was hard to come back from with a straight face. Um, and then wrapping up the show with profound words of wisdom on a variety of subjects. Uh, subjects uh, was the wonderful Jason Davis. Yeah. Uh, and who else might you have heard playing a variety of characters, mostly a 10 year old Philomus boy and a very passionate, unaged young girl. Um, but, but first, it's the 30, no, 10 year old Jason Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right there, and finally rounding out the show, the also equally wonderful uh, Oriana Mulitaro. Yeah. Okay, and I think Naomi, if, if you're still around, I don't want to forget anybody to give shout outs to and remind everybody about the tip jar as well. Anything else? Rachel, Any kind of words? For doing stuff? Didn't Rachel, our, our Miss Rachel, did we shout out to her already? Yes. Oh, yeah, we did. our yep. stage manager. Rachel. Yes, our stage manager. Yeah. yeah, Rachel. <laughs> And whoa, our whoa. studio audience, we had some. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! I love your laughs. Your audience. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Perhaps Bye. this is later on YouTube, but enjoy the show and see more stuff at the Majestic. Bye. Bye.